We can do everything during the spawn, but when one of these cold fronts comes, things change. All over. There it is right there. That didn't take one to haul. Good fish. Good solid eater. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. Well, how are we doing, folks? It's three pound fishing coming right back at you. The spawn's a great time. We can do everything during the spawn, but when one of these cold fronts comes, things change. And, you know, we are, gosh dang, we're in May. We're about to go down to freezing. And uh, that's just totally incredible to me, actually. But what I found is definitely one of the secrets to these cold fronts during the spawn, that's what we're gonna call this episode, cold fronts during the spawn, is these fish will tend to go deep. Now, when I think they're fully committed to the spawn, and they're in, they're in, whatever, they're, they're gonna be in. But sometimes during these cold fronts, they'll decide actually that they wanna start spawning outside in the deep, outside in the deeper water. They're gonna find structure in the deeper water. They're gonna go deeper. It's gonna kinda bring them back out. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the cold front that's just crushing it here right now. Tomorrow it's gonna be down to, I think 35, something crazy. But we're gonna put big fish in the boat. I'm gonna show you some live scope. Oh yeah, they're there. Thanks for watching. Here we go. Please subscribe. We're about to put big fish in the boat. So these fish are starting at 12 to 14 foot down. And we're talking out here in the deep. So I expand that in, get it closer, fill up the screen a little bit better. And there's some good fish on top here. So I like to start off by casting it. And I'll watch my weight come down. Here it is right here coming down and I'll skim that top. And I expect some good activity today. It's been a tough fight here. Yeah, they're all over. There it is right there. That didn't take long to haul. And a good fish to start off today. The water is super clear, folks. Gosh, dang, that's a great start. So this is a solid, probably almost a 12 incher. I call it a solid eater on my lake, but fatty, a lot of eggs. And that's how easy, that was literally the fat first toss and uh we're gonna let them go today great fish great fish cold fronts go deep go deep start there first then move in maybe if you're pre-fishing and, you, and they're up shallow i'll certainly probably go shallow first just because you never know they might not be out run out there yet but i like just going straight deep and work my way in on a cold front so start deep work your way in on a cold front Good night. This is a good fish. There's about four or five of these down there, so this is a really solid fit. It is a good fish. Good job, man. That's awesome. That's solid. That sounds like a 13. Bam. Good fish, solid. All I'm doing is pitching using a five pound braid line. This is a 12 footer. Pitching, pitching, pitching. I talk about efficiency all the time with my guide trips, and let's talk about that because. We're gonna let that guy go. Um, uh, to me, efficiency means more fishing time. So if a fish is out 20 feet and you throw it out 40 feet, now we wait a long time for that bait to come in to where we're fishing, where the fish are at. That means less fishing time. So I'm all about learning about what 10 foot is, 20 foot is, 40 foot. It sounds ridiculous, but if you wanna maximize your time out in the water, it's all about efficiency and making sure that you're casting just the right amount of length. So if it's 20 foot out, don't throw it 45 foot out. Um, and also, it's also about like the weights that you're using. How fast is that weight getting down, how, that bait's getting down to that fish. And of course it has to do with presentation. If they're looking for something slow, then you don't want something heavy that's gonna drag it through really quick. But the hair jigs are working right now. This is awesome. leave these because you know what I like to do on my guide trips I don't catch them all this is just me out kind of out here testing the grounds for tomorrow another guide trip that's a solid fish now a lot of people have been asking me about the uh, a lot of the gear I have on the boat this is the uh, cornfield crappie gear 
folding mount and I love it. It extends up roughly around 20 inches. I've got it sitting on top of the um, the bridge mount down there. And uh, I just love having the monitor closer up and less, you know, staring down. When the glare gets really bad, it's it's nice to actually have the ability to throw your shadow in front of it as well, I found. So check it out, Cornfield Crappie Gear. Good stuff there. Mark's a great guy. All right, so we're moseying on down to this pile. Boom, there it is right there, folks, at 40 feet. So we're going to come in slow at it. Now, the visibility of this water is extremely clear. It's deep. I mean, we're looking at probably nine feet of... So I'm definitely going to stay back on this pile and pitch this hair jig to him. And again, I start at 20 feet. I adjust right there. And then you're going to start seeing my jig come in. There it is right there. And we'll see if we get some action with that. It should. There it is right there. Good fish. Good solid eater. That's how it's done on Active Captain. First toss, the hair jig is crushing it. Boom, that's a good fish. Gosh dang. We had a tournament here for the local Crappie Masters Tour, and yours truly and Marcus, we won that. We won that, and I'll tell you, we could catch the, the heck out of the one the one pounders, but finding big fish to bite was really difficult. One of the more difficult bites I've experienced in a while here. Um, but we were able to fight through it. Um, we had such great days leading up to it, which is frustrating when you get to a tournament. All right, so there they are out there at 35 feet. I think I might have made it with that cast. There it is. I see it coming in right there. There it is. Good fighter, too. Yeah, this is a good fish. This is about almost a 14. Man, where were you on Sunday? Where were you on Sunday? That's a good fish. Now that's Active Captain for you, folks. Man, you gotta love Active Captain. All right, that's awesome. Sweet. You gotta love it, folks. You gotta love it. Deep fish. I mean, what was that at? Like 14 feet, something like that. I mean, that's that's crazy. So I've had a lot of people ask about hoodies. Unfortunately, this year I decided not to do hoodies, but I have a ton of hats, not the other broad hats, but I have a ton of three-pound fishing hats at uh, threepoundfishing.com. So check them out. I also have all the jigs that I'm using over there. Um, I think the jigs are. I mean, honestly. Jigs are on fire. Uh, I went from 100% minnows to 100% jigs, and now I've crossed over from plastics to hair jigs. It's just interesting. See that guy moving up there? Boom. Barely touched it. He barely touched it, and I'm going to tell you how that happened, how I got that. I mean, without braid, I'm not sure I get that fish. I'm not, I mean, folks, I mean, I know people want to say monofilament because of the cost and all that stuff i have no idea why you would want anything other than something that can set the hook absolutely immediate they say it's because it's a paper mouth i guess you want stretch in the in the in the, in the mono i think what you want is to be able to set that hook immediately when you feel the slightest of, of ticks the slightest of rubs you know how a bite is a bite can be a bite can be so many different things and I want the ability to immediately set the hook if I want to set the hook. See how we spook those fish off? We're watching that right now. See, this is all the fish that were on that pile. And they're moving under the trolley motor right now. And they're moving. I'm following them. So I can actually, hopefully we can get this on Active Captain here. I can drop right in front of them because I spooked them. And they're moving around really slow. They're kind of a school. You know, it's kind of like a winter, you know, pattern. Okay, so they're staying closer to the boat, so I'm going to drop a little closer now. Those are all crappie. Now I just dropped into them right there. You see it? And you might get a bite, even though they're a little spooked out a little bit. So those are all those crappie. All right, we won't catch one of those. We're going to take off active captain again. Those fish, folks, were like 14 foot. That's crazy, right? They're in the spawn. I don't waste time. I'm, 
I'm fishing. I'm not waiting for a bait. There he is right there coming across. See if we got any takers. Boom. There he is coming up. Folks, we've been out here. How long have we been out here? We've been out here 25 minutes maybe. That's just a that's a good fish though. That's a solid fish. I think anybody would take that fish right there. these you know gosh dang they're starting at 12 foot so you think you can get right on top of them i think i spook them a little bit if i do right now so i think they're a little sensitive there's another one all right man we're gonna we're gonna let this pile go we're gonna go to another pile and we're gonna try uh a plastic instead because this bait is dominating and it's almost boring catching fish like this all the time good night check out the guide service that's where it's at practice learn i'm booking in the summer come on it's tough to pick up the bait there it was yeah i picked him up you saw him coming up. there he comes active captain is awesome to show your bites and this is a solid fish solid fish now that was 35 feet away and that's how good you're gonna get with live scope and look at that beautiful fish now that brought them in now to 25 i'm managing where i'm at when i catch a fish like that but i know i wanted to be just a little bit closer so i'm good with that the uh the way i got started you know, fishing for, for crappie was I used to be a love going bluegill fishing and the story behind that is that I would catch the occasional crappie of course and I liked how they filleted out easier <laughs> you got more meat and they're easier to fillet and so when bluegill spawn was over I asked a buddy of mine if he could take me crappie fishing who was known to be a very good crappie angler he still is a very good crappie angler and uh, he did, he kind of taught me the basics and I had a lot to learn. So I always will appreciate him for that. And um, that's how I got started in the crappie fishing. People ask that all the time during the guide trips. And uh, so I never, I don't bass fish. I've never bass fished. I wouldn't know anything about bass fishing. I perhaps need to, but um, learn a little bit, but I, I don't. I, I've always been 100% uh, crappie fishing other than when I did so right now I'm on this, this structure and there's not many fish, but they look like they're pretty good. The ones that are there and see when I drop on a fish now, I just feel more, I just feel more comfortable right now if I drop on with a hair jig. And right now I don't have a hair jig and I don't have the confidence. There's another one, constant man. That's a better fish. Hitting spots right outside of spawning areas. Those fish still have eggs, folks. Those are thick fish. Oh, uh, and it is on. Um, water temperature at 58. It's gotten as uh, warm as 70. I uh, no, maybe high 60s. So there it is right there. There's a load of crappie right there just hanging out. And I tell you, that's that's just interesting to see the school right there because that is um, that is winter activity right there, and you just wonder if this cold weather has done that. So there I am sneaking in. There's one real quick. Yeah, that's a solid fish too. Ooh. Those guys are just hanging out, man. They they have look at it, full of eggs too. I mean, that's just a school of fish hanging out on the bottom. And uh, 
they're hungry. They're they're not happy right now. They'd like to be in there doing their job and having a fun time, but there I am dropping in. There was the bite. I missed it. There he was. He saw him fire up at it. I think we're going to end it on that one, folks. Thanks for watching. Active captain, awesome. Great fish. Man, that happened quick. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Three pound fishing, baby. We're going to have a great summer on piles. Look at that guide service. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be popping. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies.